Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. To Share Talk, where we're speaking to uh, David Smith, who is uh, COO at Flying Brands. How are you today, David? I am very well, thank you, Zach. Calling from Chicago, so uh, it's early morning here, but delighted to be talking to you. Okay, great. Um, Flying Brands, the clue is not in the name. Uh, could you tell us what uh, your company does? Absolutely. Flying Brands is a uh, is a company that is focused on providing software solutions to the healthcare industry. Uh, specifically, what we do is we, we make the job of radiologists uh, much more simple by providing uh, uh, products that are um, artificial intelligence products that help them interpret data from uh, the, the wide variety of pictures they see, CT scans, uh, MRI images, uh, all of which are indicative of a, a patient's health or, uh, or uh, in fact, disease. Right. I mean, I read on the, the BBC website uh, there's a radi- radiologist shortage. Uh, does that mean that this is the right environment for, for you or do you need more radiologists as well? Well, what we're what we're doing is we're producing a tool for radiologists to make their their jobs easier. I actually saw that article where I think they said that the workload of radiologists had increased thirty percent over the last five years, and in fact, the number of radiologists has only increased fifteen percent. So, anything we can do to make their lives easier, we think, will be well accepted. But I mean, is is that uh, state of affairs largely due to the improvement in your uh, your image scanning, for instance? That there's just much more of it. It's much more part of the. Uh, the, the sort of the medical um, uh, journey these days. Uh, yes, I, th- I think it is, and and I think uh, if you can take a picture rather than dive in and cut, uh, that's that's obviously the more conservative way to go. But there are problems that exist still uh, with taking pictures. So, so what tends to happen is that because of the proliferation of various different uh, imaging modalities, radiologists are being bombarded with requests to review images. Um, and to a great extent, a, num- a large number of the images that they see are for patients who are extremely healthy. Um, so it's tying up their time. Um, what we have is a software that will actually differentiate between healthy and unhealthy patients, uh, ensuring that the radiologist really only focuses on those patients where his help is uh, most useful, those patients that have disease that need to be to be diagnosed and then treated. I mean, obviously, for, for- for agencies such as the NHS, early detection saves money. Uh, are you are you helping them in that way? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I would say that throughout most of my uh, thirty year career in in healthcare, I've been associated with with companies and started companies that have produced um, really better mouse traps, uh, tools that are used in the operating room that uh, improve the quality of the outcome. And uh, while small and incremental improvements, they, they've actually been successful companies financially. And um, when I was approached by Flying Brands to uh, to become the chief operating officer, what struck me was the opportunity to really revolutionise the way in which healthcare is delivered. Um, and uh, it, it is a revolution rather than an evolution I've been previously associated with. So yes, I think I think there's a, a real opportunity with Flying Brands products to streamline the workflow and to um, to basically get a lot of those images of healthy patients off the radiologist's desk and treated by the software. Um, now, the radiologist is still involved, so we're not practicing medicine here with our software. What we're doing is we're providing a diagnostic tool to him or her to, to help them process those patients faster and really just focus on those that need their help most. Uh, you've got this offering. Um, is I mean, you're a relatively small company. Is uh, are you rubbing shoulders with the big people? Are you a competitor? Are you disruptive? How how do we? How should you know potential um, investors uh, or observers of your company anyway uh, regard you in in your space? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, I, I think that the um, the segment of the market that we're in is disruptive. Um, obviously, um, the, the field of artificial intelligence, I think, will change the face of healthcare over the next 10 years. Um, Flying Brands itself is, um, is a company that has uh, found customers in some of the larger names. Uh, Mayo Clinic has been using the software uh, from, from our subsidiary company, um, for about eight years now. So, so we do find that the, uh, 
uh, imaging biometric software gets great play here in the United States and is well recognized. It's, it's simply a marketing job now that Flying Brands has acquired them to get the word out and to have the quality of their products recognized by a broader array of hospitals worldwide. Right, something I ask a lot of, uh, let's say, disruptive companies or companies that are trying to um, you know, get, you know, get space in their sector is whether they've got the pricing power and whether they're pricing their, their offering uh, in a uh, sustainable way in terms of, you know, the P&L for, for themselves. I mean, it seems to be uh, a lot of new entrants in the field tend to go for a loss leader approach and, um, and then maybe lose momentum because, you know, they, they don't have the, the, the capital at their hands. How, how have you addressed that? We're actually going through um, a little bit of a change within the flying brands companies at the moment. So, so historically, um, the software has been sold at a large price, and I'm, I'm talking anywhere between fifteen and thirty-five thousand dollars for a suite of software. And what that's done is it's it's I think delayed the selling uh, process. So. So often at that level, uh, hospitals um, think about it for quite some time before jumping in. Uh, it often has to be budgeted a year in advance. And I think that's really delayed the sale in what is a very fast moving uh, area. It's developing quickly. So one of the things that we've done, um, uh, in particular with the imaging biometrics software, is we've teamed up with companies that are capable of delivering uh, our software solutions in the cloud which means that any hospital that has access to an internet connection can now use our products. They don't have to make that fifteen dollars to $35,000 investment. Um, and we are moving towards a, a click fee model where perhaps the hospital um, is charged $50 approximately for accessing our, our very sophisticated and expensive software. Now, obviously, as a company, we have to make sure that we balance uh, that out, and we we don't immediately go from selling thirty five thousand dollars software to selling fifty dollars click fees, um, but but I think that uh, we're on a good trajectory at the moment. Uh, we've just introduced uh, that software across three different platforms in the United States, and um, and we are seeing uh, early interest in that. And and as I said earlier, it's it's simply a marketing job now to make sure the market understands the value uh, that our products provide. Right, you made a couple of uh, big uh, acquisitions um, over the, the recent past. Um, are you are you in a land grab type of mode at the moment? Uh, we are, but as you pointed out, we're a small company, um, and uh, and I think that I, I see this as as piecing together the, the bits in a jigsaw puzzle and. Uh, Sometimes uh, you can actually look at the pieces and figure out where they fit and, and approach them and then bring them into the overall puzzle. Some of the time they, they, they opportunistically present themselves and you have the option to acquire or not acquire. And you know if you don't acquire, uh, someone else will and that opportunity is gone forever. So I think we, we will be um, judicious with our, our M&A uh, program. Um, it is certainly a large part of our future. Um, I think uh, in the imminent future, I, I don't see uh, anything that's, uh, that's a piece of the jigsaw that we could fit in right now. But certainly we're looking at several different areas. And, and uh, in the future, I think it's going to be a big part of the way that Flying Brands grows. Right. Uh, just, I mean, a general investor relations question, which uh, is probably one of the perennial ones. Uh, in a small cap area, especially the AIM market, uh, if, it doesn't have, if it doesn't come from a hole in the ground, investors don't tend to understand it. And the, the further away you get from that, uh, the less uh, they uh, are so keen to dip their toe in the water unless there's something very special. Uh, I mean, it, it's an education process as much as anything else. And this obviously sounds a bit like rocket science or may do. Um, how, how can you address that issue? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think that... Um, so, so this has been a, a rapid learning curve for, for me in terms of um, understanding exactly um, what uh, these, these two sub subsidiary companies do. Uh, obviously, I've been involved in, in medical devices for, for 30 years. And, and if you can see it and look at it and you can, you can say where you poke it and what it does and it, you can show it provides benefit, it's a rel relatively straightforward selling exercise to both customers and shareholders. Um, I see myself here as the uh, the glue or the, or the communicator between this very sophisticated work that's going on at our subsidiary companies um, and the both the customer and the investor. 
Um, so if I have to state it in such a way that I understand it, then I'm sure the average investor is going to understand it. So you're assuming that people understand an MRI, what an MRI scan is or a CT scan, and therefore they'll hopefully understand uh, what Flying Brands does. Yes, and I think what Flying Brands does is it, it, it simplifies, it provides a tool to radiologists to help their efficiency in interpreting these images. And, and if it can do a lot of the work in weeding out the, the patients who are clearly healthy, um, that don't require their images to be put in front of the radiologist, then, then I think everyone's going to see the efficiency that that will bring to the system. Um, and it's not just the system, Zach. It's I mean, the, the system will benefit because because there are limited resources that are very expensive, and we just want to use those for unhealthy patients. Um, but also the patient benefits um, because um, often when you get a, a picture taken of you, um, a CT scan, that's quite a high dose of X-ray that the patient is receiving. Uh, if it's an ambiguous clinical result read by the radiologist, you, you may actually have an invasive uh, biopsy done to sample some tissue to see if it's healthy or diseased. So um, I think the patient wins too. And I think the, the doctor wins, the radiologist wins because they didn't go to medical school to spend 80% of their time looking at pictures of patients that didn't have disease. They're really interested in focusing on those disease patients and helping them. So I think where you have an alignment of the interests of both the healthcare system, the doctor, and the patient, uh, and your pricing is right, then, then I, I see great success in the future for flying brands. Finally, you've got um, Trevor Brown uh, in place as the CEO of Flying Brands. And uh, for those who don't know, he's, he's been involved with Feedback, MRS, uh, Stradero and uh, Braveheart um, as well. So um, one of the rules of, of this of the small cap area is to follow management. Uh, presumably, this is something which uh, is, uh, can only um, help or back um, the Flying Brands in terms of expertise. Uh, I, I absolutely agree. I, I've worked with Trevor, uh, Trevor for a short period of time. I, I find him to be a, an inspirational leader. Um, I thoroughly enjoy working for him. I think he and I make a good team. And um, and I look forward to working uh, for the benefit of him and uh, other shareholders of Blind Brands for many years to come. David Smith, it's been an inspirational interview. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, Zach. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.